Hey friends, if you're looking for quick tips to help you jumpstart your week, you are in the right place. I'm Lori Palau, host of the popular weekly podcast, Organized Life, founder of Simply Be Organized. And every Monday, I am here to bring you a quick organizing tip in under 15 minutes. All you have to do is click the subscribe or follow button wherever you're listening, and let's get started. Everybody and welcome to today's tip of the week. I am your host, Lori Palau, and really glad that you are with us. We are plowing through October, which is just crazy to think. Before you know it, Halloween is going to be here. And if you're a mom of littles, that is a big deal. It was always a big deal in my house. Even as a kid, I remember my mom was an artist, and so she used to make these really great Halloween costumes. I personally wasn't as crafty of a mom. Um, my kids were crafty, so they came up with ideas. And as they got a little bit older, they got they got really excited about going to Michael's and making, getting material and making their own Halloween costumes. I know one year Zoe went with her with a group of her friends. They all went as different candy bars and they made their own their own costumes. And one year Logan went as Oscar the Grouch and. She had a green long sleeve shirt, and then we got all of this like green bray yarn at Michael's and hot glue gunned literally strips and strips all onto this t shirt. And it took a long time, but it was an inexpensive and a fun project. But it runs the gamut. And I love every year we live in a neighborhood which is notorious for attracting trick or treaters. It's the big thing. And I love seeing what all the different costumes are and what the themes are. But I also know that Halloween costumes are an area that a lot of people wind up accumulating year after year, especially if you have multiple kids. And we don't always get rid of them. And I even know in our home, in our home, we have adult Halloween costumes because back in the day, Josh and I used to have a neighborhood Halloween party for the grownups. And so we had a ton of different Halloween costumes. Half of them I wouldn't even be able to fit into anymore, but that's for a whole other day. And so oftentimes people are like, what do I do with that? Do I, how long do I hold on to them? Do I hold on to them for another kid? Is there a sentiment, like a sentimental thing? Uh, attachment to them or what should I do with them? And so I just thought we would just spitball a few different things that you can do. Some of the things that I've done over the years, some of them I haven't, but I think they're really great ideas to just give you some school thought. And it's also great if you are maybe like on a really tight budget and you're looking for some, want to get something for your kids and getting a new costume might not be in your budget. Some of these are ways, some of these ideas are ways that might be able to spark some thoughts for you on where to even go to source source costumes without having to spend a lot of money. So here goes. The first thing is obviously donating them, right? Like that just seems pretty obvious, low-hanging fruit, right? We're going to donate that. But if you, there's a lot of charities that will take them, but there are some specific places and if you Google them, that will just do like costumes. A lot of times kids consignment stores also have costumes that they will resell. I know my good friend of mine who used to own a child's children's consignment store. That was like one of the biggest hot commodities. And this was great because you were also able, if you sold something from the consignment store, you actually get a piece of the money back, which is nice. And some people, they that's they're looking to make money off of it, and that's fine too. But if you're just looking to free up space, donating your costumes are great. Donating it to a charity. Another place that you can donate them to oftentimes are shelters, like women's shelters. Unfortunately, when people are victims of domestic violence, and people at times, oftentimes will like flee with just the clothes on their back, and there's children involved. And these people are oftentimes living in temporary housing or in shelters. And around the holidays, especially something with Halloween, we want to give these kids as much sense of normalcy as we can. And so I would check your in your local area some women's shelters and see if that's something that they are accepting. You could also look to potentially donate some stuff to preschools or local churches or synagogues. 
they oftentimes will have people either they want to put them in the kind of the playroom, like I know at our church, there might be like a dress up area where in the kids' nursery um, or at a preschool, they may have that. Or they may have families, again, that are families in need. And maybe they're just not super public about it, but they want to be able to offer them something. And so there's a lot of places that are probably more than we often give credit to that could welcome your Halloween costumes. And the nice thing about donating Halloween costumes is oftentimes they're in really good shape because you've worn them once or maybe you pass it down and it's been worn once or twice by another kid. But it's not like it, a traditional hand-me-down that's maybe had some wear and tear on it. Halloween costumes are something that are relatively new. So I think that's a great thing to do. Again, and I touched on this briefly when I talked about consigning, but if you have the time and you want to, I'm all about simple and convenient. And this, what I'm about to propose, adds a little bit more on my to-do list. So it's not my personal preference, but selling it on the marketplace, right? Or if you have a local neighborhood kind of website or whatever, a swap where you want to say, hey, I'm going to sell it. I'm going to sell it at a garage sale, Facebook marketplace or whatever. People are always looking for it. Again, because costumes are expensive. Everything's expensive. And this is a way for you to possibly recoup some of your investment. But if you're on the buying end, you're buying a relatively good conditioned firefighter costume for a fraction of what you would pay for it now. And plus, I love the idea of upcycling and not just having complete new consumption and kind of just being able to pass it forward. So I think that is a great option. And then a third thing that you can do, especially if you have younger kids at home and you like have your older kids, but maybe you're not ready to get rid of it right away because you don't know it's one of my younger kids going to want to wear it, but I don't I don't really have a lot of room to sp- to store it. If you have a pretend play area in your home, like a dress-up area, that is also a fun place to put those costumes. I see it a lot with the Disney princesses, but also other things like, again, your staples, your police officers and firefighters and astronauts and all those things. They're great for pretend play. And my kids were really big into pretend play. We had a whole, we had a puppet theater. We had a whole dress-up section. And those are like really fun things. And if you want to be able to add to it, add some new things to it, if you take the Halloween costumes and you put them in there, oftentimes kids will play with them. Even the kid that wore it, if they loved it, now they want to use it to play with. So instead of just storing it or selling it or donating it, Move it into rotation for them so that they can get some more life out of that. I know we did that with some of the Disney princesses costumes. Logan was and still slightly is obsessed with the Wizard of Oz. So she had a Dorothy costume. And I think I actually, I'm 99% sure it's actually the Dorothy costume is actually in her memorabilia bin because it was such a part of who she, like part of her childhood that I didn't want to part with it. So I did put that in her keepsake. Uh, memory and her keepsake memory bin. But it was great because even after Halloween was over, she still wanted to dress up like Dorothy. And so it was a great time for her to be able to do that and play with her friends and get some more life out of this. So as a parent who's spending money on these costumes, why not get some additional use out of it? So those are some ideas of what to do with Halloween costumes to either buy them or sell them or go claim them if you're in need. And I hope you found this useful and practical. And again, if you have any questions for us or want any additional support in your own decluttering journey, please feel free to reach out to us. You can hop on a free discovery call with me or check out our website for all the different things that we have going on, both our free resources and our paid resources. And until next week, I'm Lori Palau. Peace out. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, please spread the love and share it with your friends. If this is your first time joining us, make sure to click the subscribe button wherever you are listening so you never miss an episode. And while you're there, please leave us a review so other people know that our show is worth the listen. 
You can also find us on YouTube and Instagram at This Organized Life Podcast. And if you'd like to connect with us, you can head on over to our website at simply the letter B, like boy, organized.com, which is filled with tons of resources, including free downloads, checklists, links to our amazing organizing partners, and all of our digital offerings. I'll see you next week for another episode of This Organized Life.